fantastic commentary from the guys at Ibrox and a fantastic, fantastic achievement by Rangers last night. They've got themselves to Seville. Can they go one step further and beat Eintracht Frankfurt? Conquerors of West Ham United. Leicester also knocked out last night by Mourinho's Roma. So that, the European Conference League, but Rangers was the big story. Now, Martin, you and I spoke about this before Mr. Jordan joined us this morning, before we came on air. So, Simon, I'm keen to get your take on this, and we'll, th- then we'll pile in with what Martin thinks. Simon, if Rangers conquer Europe, if they go all the way now, and you've, you, if you don't mind me saying, you've taken up quite an interest in Rangers now, mm-hmm. because you were intrigued with what you saw when you and I were up at Ibrox and they played Celtic. Yeah. You, you, you were somewhat taken aback by the size and the scale of the, the, the support and the passion of them. But in term, in reputational terms, Simon, what would it do for the image of Scottish football if Rangers win in Seville? Um, look, I mean, we spoke about it yesterday, didn't we? We talked about the Battle of Britain and, and how people will parody the Scottish leagues. But when it comes to the Battle of Britain's in previous incarnations, like Leeds versus Rangers, yeah. they, actually the Scottish teams have come out on top. I, I think it does a lot for Charlie Van Bronckhurst, <clears throat> quite frankly. But if, if Scottish, if Rangers, which are an elite club, when we talked about elite clubs and elite teams, right, Rangers and Celtic in their own little world and in the scale and size of their support are elite football clubs because of their history and livery, right? So elite clubs overcome obstacles. The argument we're talking about Man City falling at that hurdle with Real Madrid. It does a tremendous amount for them because, A, as Martin alluded to, it'll put them in the Champions League. So the disadvantage that they had that they didn't want, nobody wanted, nobody wanted to lose this Scottish Premier League because it was the opening of the gateway to a 30 to £35 million pound income stream. And Rangers have just potentially stymied that opportunity by Celtic by bringing themselves into a position where they're capable of achieving the same outcome. So not only does it give an argument, this argument that's been unfairly levied at Scotland that it shouldn't have an automatic team in the Champions League as a matter of course, because we were also seeing that argument being superseded by the potential of some sort of coefficient that took Celtic yeah. out of the qualification. Yeah. So you've now got a league which has got teams that are playing in the Champions League and potentially teams that are winning the second tier of European football. So it gives real grist to the elbow of Scottish of the Scottish federations to make sure that they're treated properly at now, the table. I am delighted, Simon, that you, you, you're saying that. And you're saying it because you mean it. Yeah, too, yeah, yeah. Because down here, Martin, we know, not in this part of England specifically, but throughout England, Scottish football is a bit of a pub league, isn't it? It's a two horse race up there. It's either Celtic or Rangers or Rangers or Celtic. You hear it all the time. Well, this this gives them more credit, doesn't it? Because they, they have to be taken seriously now. Because this is, as I said, it was astonishing what they've achieved. To get to this final is, uh, and you look at Leipzig, where are they now? Fifth in the Bundesliga just outside of that fourth position, still fighting for a Champions League position, quite likely to make the Champions League. So what they're up against, the teams they've knocked out, Dortmund as well. Um, certainly these German teams know a thing or two about them. They've got to play another one in the final. Yeah, I think they're going to go into this with, with a great deal of confidence. As I say, Gio van Bronckhurst. This, for me, feels like it's very much Gerrard's team that's been built by him. But you have to say that van Bronckhurst has come in, found a way to win in Europe with his, his, his vast experience as a player, Champions League winner, um, and it's taken it now to, to the next level. And the atmosphere at Ibrooks really played its part. And I do feel that second leg, Jim, when you go to that, you know, it's a winner. It's worth another goal, maybe. That yeah. second leg, knowing what's ahead of you. It was a difficult task, and they came through it. And they, they even conceded a goal and then still kept going. Really fantastic performance. Their crowd, though, played their part in that. And it was one of the uh, the, the great nights. They did. I think it's a bit unfair to say it's Gerard's team because two key components of it, which are the people that score the goals that win games, weren't in these fixtures. So it's Van Bronckhurst's version of maybe in a group of players that were established by Gerard, but he's taken them into a space and place without two major assets. But I'm only, stri- I'm only quoting a fact. He's p- essentially put this team together. Of course, Gio gets a pat on the back for what he's done with the team. That's he's inherited But if you take Morellis out and you take Roof out and you look at the Rangers, you are in, the, in an argument where they're nowhere near as potent. So something else has to come to the fore. And something has to come to the fore, which is the tactical nous of Van Bronckhurst, the utilisation of the players that he's got there to overcome the obstacles. So that makes it about him, not Gerard. But then I think the players have developed. I mean, someone like Tavernier now is just unrecognisable from mm. when he was there. Jim, mm. how many goals? He scored. He can't stop scoring goals. 
Yeah, you know, great. I mean, it was and just instinct. Like, embodies it in the previous tie. The energy that he had kept going. Braga, incredible. Just, I mean, in the in the in the in the extra time, he was yes. running the length of the pitch. Yeah. So it doesn't surprise me that he comes out as the hero. On, on uh, you know yeah. scoring the goal that changes the, the, the game in favour of but Rangers. But Simon, all the more remarkable when you consider this was Rangers' 60th game of the season and the yeah. 18th of a European campaign, which began against Malmo in a Champions League qualifier yeah. on August the third last year. The only thing I will caveat that, because what we're going to do here is we're going to turn around and say Rangers have played 60 games, Man City have played 55 games, why are they running out of legs, which was the argument that was being advanced in the discussion yesterday, Martin, and why aren't Rangers? And we do have to be concise about the fact that the Scottish Premier League, despite the achievement of Rangers and Celtic... Here we go, here we go. Come on, when you're playing lesser teams in Scotland that are lesser in that league, the, the energy required to beat some of these teams isn't the same as Man City having to do play. You th- do you honestly yeah, believe I do. that? I do, because, it, come on, I do not want to degrade Rangers and Celtic's performance on any level, but, we but always the quality hear, at the bottom of the no, Scottish Simon, Premier League is nowhere near the quality of the bottom of the Premier League. I'm going to jump in here, because we always hear, the players will tell you, when Aberdeen play Rangers, it's like a cup, t- a cup tie for Aberdeen. It's like a one-off. It's like a cup final. Application-wise, but not... When Celtic but, but go not, to St Mirren, St Mirren will try and, and raise they, their and game. They raise the, and you think that doesn't when happen... When Celtic to, go to Hearts, and, Hearts will and, try and, and, and raise their game. But do you think that doesn't happen to Manchester United, Liverpool, Man City and Chelsea in every single game? But here's the thing. The quality of... Martin will speak to this far more eloquently than I can. The quality of the player on the pitch... You might want to huff and puff and put your best endeavour in there, but when it comes to the quality of the players, the yeah. quality of the players in the, in the English Premier League from the bottom to the top are far right. greater than the Scottish League. Well, so I'm going to let the greater. cat out of the bag here, Simon, because Martin, to be honest with you, when you and I were talking through there, you don't agree with me. You were by no, no I do. Hang I do. on, you were by no means as complimentary about the Scottish game and respectful about the Scottish game honest. as you are now I'm, on air. Well, what I'll t- yeah, okay, we, we'll, let's share everything off. Is there. that fair? Let's share, let's share everything off. Is that there. fair? It, 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 well, let me come to that. I'll get a chance to speak. I thought we'd speak on it <laughs> rather than off air. But look, everything's for public if we break it to, If we break it down, Celtic and Rangers are by far the best two teams. Everybody else, when they play Celtic Rangers, okay, home game is just. Raise their games. It, yeah. Massive crowd. You can even give your own home, home allocation away. I saw it with Partick Thistle. And it becomes a task of, can you stop Celtic and Rangers winning? They have 89% of the possession. It's it's not as taxing as it is maybe for a Man City or a Liverpool. They're difficult, Jim. We've got eight teams now in the Premier League, which make it quite tricky for you to win it. This weekend, we have Spurs-Liverpool. Now, Liverpool are the best team in Europe. I agree. But no one's going to say hand on heart that Spurs are not capable of an upset. Now, that's not really going to happen in the Scottish Premier League. Yeah, but let me tell you this. It's, it's a two-horse race in Scotland. It's a two-horse right. race but, in but, England. But what needs to happen is, in Scotland, what we need to do is protect the whole of the league. You want a more competitive Scottish Premier League. Yeah, that's, they've got to be more yes, competitive. Okay, yeah, we've so got to drag the bottom up. Some the world. of this wealth that's now going to come to Celtic and Rangers is going to make them even bigger. That's but true. will that be distributed through the league? If it doesn't, you don't have a league. You have a league that's not really competitive. He's right. And that is a fact. You've got to pull the bottom up. But Jim, you don't have a league. But... Don't get don't, all, don't get over no, said. Don't, you don't, don't have a league. Who's going to win the league? No, you don't, you don't have a league with fair competition. So look, take the time. Your it's time in the sun. Manchester City dominates it here. Man City have won four of the last five, and that's right to argue that. But they've been pushed very hard. And if you look at it, who's pushing Rangers and Celtic? You have you can make, you can make an argument for what's coming down the pipe with Chelsea because at the beginning of this season we talked about Chelsea being the team to beat. Eventually, Man United are going to wake up because they've got the economic power to do so. So now we've got four. Right, what we've got in Scotland: Rangers, Celtic, Rangers, no, no, Celtic. No, no, no. Let's talk about the here and now. City press we've got Liverpool. To drag, Liverpool push City. We've got to drag in the, Scotland. Rangers push Celtic, and Celtic push Rangers. We've got the no, here but, and but now. Man City and Liverpool have raised the bar of which everyone is following behind. But what I want to see in Scotland. They're miles clear of everybody. Hang on, what I want to see in Scotland is the bottom pulled up, not the top pulled down. Correct. I don't want Rangers and Celtic pulled down. And how do you I do want, that? Well. Find a Jim, find you, an economic model you've got your better. Rangers fan hat on today. You should have your Scottish Premier League hat on. <laughs> it's about the collective. You want a He's more. Right. Co- you want a more competitive league. How do we do that? They're the questions you should be asking well, I'll, today. I'll, I'll completely spite your argument, Martin, because money hasn't made the Premier League in England more competitive. Oh, oh hasn't it? Has no, some no. of the wealthiest. It's a Premier... two-horse race. So Leicester no, didn't Leicester true. win it in recent times? Of course, it is. It is true. It's if you look true. at the league table, that's not true. We've now got eight. Look at the daylight between. Manchester City, Liverpool, and then Chelsea. Yeah, and I mean, we were talking yesterday about this again, going off piece a little bit about what Man City didn't have and haven't done. How many years did it take Chelsea, with all their money, to win the Champions League? When you Quite look a few at years, what, yeah, yeah, under, under the management of Roman Abramovich. Abramovich so when, we, when, we're, when we're slaughtering Man City about Pep Guardiola's regime of not being able to build a Champions League team. Also go and look at some of these other sides that have had inordinate amounts of money and how how long did it take Alex Ferguson to win the Champions League? How long did Man United get to win the Champions League? 
10, 13 years under his, ownership, under his management. So I just want to go back to the Man City thing, but the bottom line with Scotland is you need to make this league the overall bo- more competitive. The bottom line with Scotland. We need, to, we need to see an Aberdeen in there again. Yeah. Of course we, we do. See Jim, a, this, this wealth has to be distributed through the Scottish but you two are, league. And, and you're going to say, well, no, that, that makes it more difficult for Rangers to compete, yes, on Europe. And what they're doing is amazing. <laughs> Take nothing away from what Rangers are doing, but you've got to look at the rest of the league. You've got, you if say you're watching that, on YouTube Jim, and Facebook, Jim, look at Jordan. To say that wealth doesn't make a difference, Newcastle... Spent a hundred million pounds in the transfer window, just gone. And what are they doing next year? Punched They're in the Premier League. Yeah. So yeah, but they without were that wealth, by the Saudis. without that wealth, what would have happened? There's nothing to do with distribution. Of course, it's linked to finance. No, that's true. It's that's, nothing that's to do true. with distribution. The Saudis came to town. Yeah, but they spent. But we're talking about it? money here, aren't we? Where the money came. But why from. did they buy it? Yeah. The the fact of the matter is this: against all the odds, Rangers have found themselves this morning Indeed in have. a European final. Leicester haven't. West Ham haven't. Rangers have and they should be commended for that achievement in itself Jim White and Simon Jordan Monday to Thursday morning 10 till 1 on AM on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker TalkSport